Welcome back to the number one breakfast show in the country, Morning at NTV. I'm Romeo Busika, and of course, this is the show that gives you first-hand information to help you kickstart your day, to help you conquer your week, conquer your life with the best information that will help you make decisions that actually transform your life. Speaking of transformation, government has a plan to transform um, subsistence farming or agriculture all the way to commercialized agriculture, and they plan to use the parish development model, but it's causing so many people you know, to talk a lot. Yes, 490 billion had been earmarked for only one pillar. But then we saw the slashing of the same money all the way to 200 billion shillings. Will that money deter government's efforts of alleviating poverty at the household level by over 68%? Or is there any other... Um, modality to this that we do not already know. So we shall be talking about the parish development model and agriculture as a whole, its budget allocation in, the just, uh, uh, in this national budget framework. And uh, we shall uh, compound on this conversation with Mr. Patrick Bangakene from the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group. The total budget allocation to agriculture sector increased from 1 trillion Uganda shillings in the financial year 2019-2020 to uh, all the way 1.3 trillion shillings in the financial year 2020-2021. And this financial year 2021-2022, it's going to be 1.6 trillion Uganda shillings. This has thus increased the sector's percentage share of the national budget from 3.2% all the way to 3.7%. So what does it mean for the last farmers in this country and also the agricultural sector itself? Mr. Patrick Lubanga Kenny is here, is budget specialist from the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group. Yes, his boss is Julius Mukunda, and he shall be expanding more on this conversation with us. Very good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. How is the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group? Yes, yes, work is great. Yes, you have a high-level dialogue well, tomorrow, yes, to talk about resuscitating the economy before we go, before we go into agriculture. Okay, yeah, yes. we have two dialogues. Mm. Uh, one, it's tomorrow that we are partnering with our um, sister organization, that's yes. Accord. Mm. That one will be centered around the economy. Though also, there's another dialogue that we shall be having I think sometime next week or so, still mm. speaking about the economy and the mm. budget. Oh, all yes. right. 3.3 million people fell into poverty during the onset of the COVID-19 lockdown. Don't you think this is a very callous development? I was looking at the numbers. There's so many people. 600,000 jobs were lost. Yeah, COVID really impacted on this economy broadly. Uh, remember, we have a very huge chunk of Ugandans who are still in the subsistence um, mm. economy. Mm. So when COVID struck, they were not actually prepared mm. because others, the kind of jobs that they engaged in is just uh, you earn on a daily basis. So when COVID struck, businesses were closed. That means people had to go back home and sit. Uh, these ones who are doing border border businesses also lost out partially. People were running um, small shops. Mm. Let me say all these small, medium enterprises were really a big victim when COVID came in. Even the large industries because like markets, accessing markets became a problem because most of the countries also mm. had to shut down their borders. That meant these people had to downsize uh, mm. on their production because there's nothing much they were doing. So the high level dialogue is to talk about what interventions we can execute to help the country come back onto recovery. Yes, so the dialogue tomorrow that uh, CS back, Minister mm. of Finance and mm. Accord is going to have, is majorly centered on what should be done mm -hmm. to get to kick start largely economy. centering on smallholder farmers how do you think the COVID-19 pandemic affected our agricultural sector okay uh, when COVID struck mm. I think agriculture was one of the sectors that didn't really suffer much mm. courtesy of COVID because there was increased demand for foods Indeed. and since the majority of our farmers are rural based they didn't really see the impact because the urban people demanded for food and, they and to yes really the demand supply. was there but then there was lack of access to inputs lubanga kenny access for inputs yes, yes was partially affected mm. because you see when covid came it didn't come at the real start mm. something was already going on mm -hmm. production was taking place mm. so yes the uh, the crops that could have been or the livestock uh, that needed some few inputs yes were impacted on but not broadly mm. because agriculture was one of the most resilient sectors Indeed. that registered a positive growth mm. compared to the other sectors in the economy. 
So the government has now come out, they say, all right, we need to resuscitate the agricultural sector, but not resuscitating subsistence farmers. They plan to transform the sector from subsistence farming all the way to commercialized agriculture. The Paris Development Model, 490 billion was earmarked for only one pillar, and MPs were talking. They don't know there's <laughs> another stash of cash for the same Paris Development Model. How much really was injected in this fund? Because what we are seeing was 490 billion, which they since slashed for one pillar, and it was reduced to 200 billion shillings. How much really was uh, injected in the parish development model? I think before we really unpack mm. what's in the parish development mm. model, it's better we get to understand broadly what is government thinking for agriculture. Yeah. Now, uh, if you look at the agriculture budget, it has been increasing. We had one, one trillion. Mm. Now the projected in, uh, allocation is 1.6 trillion mm -hmm. in 21-22, mm. which still... It's a meager location because Indeed. that's only 3.8 percent of the overall national. If you're budget. looking at the uh, security and governance, which are taking 6.9 trillion. Yeah. So, mm. and yet agriculture is something which is key. Uh, if you if you look at the the performance of the sector mm. broadly, 43 uh, percent of our exports, total exports for this country, mm. came from agriculture. Uh, 65 percent of our farmers are into subsistence agriculture. 64% uh, of Ugandans are employed in that sector. Mm. And out of the 64%, the majority are youth. 70% of the youth are into agriculture. That means agriculture gives us something which not all sectors give. Because remember, food is being brought on mm. board. Agriculture is earning for us through exports. Agriculture is also giving us employment. So broadly, agriculture really... So if, agricu if agriculture is the heavenly intervention this country has been clamoring for or has been having but we have not been maximizing, so why are the budget, uh, you know, uh, the finance ministry uh, adamant to actually allocate more money to, agric to the agricultural sector? 6.9 trillion went to security and governance, only 1.6 trillion to agriculture, yet it's employing the biggest majority of our people. Let's talk about what, um, uh, you know, what actually compounds this kind of thinking, the mismatch in priorities? I think when it comes to budget allocation, there are really so many factors that come mm. into play. Let's talk about that. Mm. Now, we look at the different sectors. Uh, right now, we are doing program-based budgeting. So now, what the citizens out there also need to understand, the programs collapse very many sectors. So by the time you see a sector like governance and security, there are so many sectors that are in there. You will find that defense people are there, the JLO sector is in there. So it's broad. So it is just the it, fine, the money yeah. they are receiving. Yeah, because they consolidated oh, right. so much money in there. So once mm. you see that amount of money, mm. you look at it and say, wow, mm. this is too much. But when we start unpacking, mm. you really see, yes, nothing much didn't change. It's mm. more or less like the same allocations we have been seeing, security taking a big share, state house getting a share of money. Mm. That didn't change, mm. basically. Mm -hmm. But once we brought them all together in a program, the amount really shot up. Because right now, if you look, the biggest allocation of uh, this budget is going to human capital development, mm -hmm. which is a surprise to many, mm -hmm. because human capital is taking 17% of the budget. Indeed. So which is actually even now bigger than governance and security. Mm. However, when again you start unpacking, you don't see much change that went to education, that went to health in that budget. Do you it believe these budget allocations speak to the National Development Plan 3 that also seeks to transform Uganda from a subsistence economy all the way to commercialized agriculture? On paper, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree with that because if you look at uh, what came out from NPA, yes. they're saying 62% of this budget is aligned to the National Development Plan. However, when we start looking through into this budget, mm. we see that there are certain needs uh, that we're really budgeting for, which doesn't really resonate with a common person. Mm. Because now let's focus on agriculture. Agriculture that carries the country, gives us the food, gives us employment and everything. It's not getting its equal share, and yet it's a priority in the NDP. Three. Indeed. So it would require certain realignment because from the civil society perspective, we need to really focus on the social sectors. We need more money going into health. The service sectors, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. education, uh, agriculture, water, social development. That is where 
someone feels the budget is impacting on them. This has been more of a, uh, a chorus, if you will, Patrick Lubanga Kenny, all these recommendations that you're saying. Every financial year we come out and we give these recommendations. Let's give more money to the service sectors, but still more money will be you given see, to the uh, security and governance and little money will be see, given to the service sectors. Like civil society, yes. Mm. But we, what, do you, what do you think they are adamant to actually focus on the service sectors? No. What makes them not really mm. plan and allocate more resources? Because from what you get to hear from government, they say, yes, we have so little resources Indeed. so that everyone has to share in that cake. And to them, now when they start realigning their priorities, really, it's a real mismatch from what a common person mm. needs. So they have the intended priorities, which, again, when you look at the documents that are set, the priorities really speak to what a common person mm. should get, but when it comes to actualization of the budget, mm. it skews to another. another I, part is it a matter of uh, little resources, uh, Patrick Lubanga Kenny, or just a mismatch in priorities, poor planning? Because I was looking at the numbers as per the Daily Monitor, we didn't use 17 trillion shillings, 17 trillion shillings in undisbursed loans. There's money that was going to health, education. Agriculture, that money that was never used. So when I was hearing uh, the finance minister say, Matia Kasadi, that we do not have money, and I was seeing 17 trillion in unused loans, and they just concluded financial year, actually still running, the one for 2020. See, what does that mean? But by the time we don't absorb, you see, that's one of the biggest challenge we have currently. Uh, our absorptive capacity is really low, mm. and that really comes majorly when it comes to loans. Indeed. There are so many factors that come into play when you see money is uh, meant for service delivery, getting back to the con uh, consolidated fund. One key issue is uh, procurement. The procurement processes at times over delays. So by the time money is released from the center to go to that point, it's too late. Largely from PPDA. Mm. Yeah, so it, no, no, no. Not necessarily mm. PPDA, because even local governments have to undertake their procurement processes. Indeed. So now such delays impacts mm. on service delivery, because uh, you look at again when we could have contracted a loan, in that component there's counterpart funding from government. <coughs> government is supposed to uh, honor its bargain. Now, uh, that money maybe from the donor mm. reaches the ground, but again government's contribution may come in late. Mm. So, and the law is very clear. By the time the financial year ends, whatever is left has to go back to the consolidated fund. Mm. So now, such delays in disbursement really brings into... And it also negates the argument coming in from the finance ministry that this country does not have money. I mean, the health sector was grappling and there was money. The education sector was grappling and there was money. So it negates that whole conversation. No, that there could not be money, money, but mm. the money has been tacked on a specific activity. So, so you can move money which was tacked. For example, mm. uh, this was for a road. And now you want to say this money should go into construction of schools. Mm -hmm. No. Actually, it's, it's largely of the external funds, for, yeah. largely the money that we'd not use in funds was from external funding. Mm -hmm. That's what I do not understand. Yeah, that, that comes because of mm -hmm. the absorptive capacity. Yeah. Because like our public investment management policies mm -hmm. and the rest, now there are gaps mm -hmm. in there that actually we need to address. Because if you look at the Auditor General's report, 1.3 mm -hmm. trillion. The last report. All right. Now, that's money we fail to absorb. All right, let's continue with the food basket, and uh, this is agriculture. Let's talk about the parish development model. 38 million shillings is uh, planned to be unleashed at the parish level. Do you think this money will go a long way in alleviating poverty at the household level, 68% as per the government target? Okay. For starters, uh, the parish development model, yes, it's a brilliant idea that government came up with. That's a... Uh, they're saying they're deepening decentralization. Indeed. We are really taking it to the last mile. Uh, the local government planning guidance says planning and collection of uh, aspirations mm. starts right at the parish. Mm -hmm. Yes, currently we, we are having it. However, there has been a weakness when it comes to planning because ideally we should start getting budgetary aspirations right from the parish where the parish development committee should sit, pick the priorities mm. for their parish, bring it to the sub-county, the sub-county consolidates, mm. gets the sub-county priorities, yes. then they take it to the district. Mm. Now, this is something which is not unique in the planning process. Mm. However, there were challenges 
we have a total of 10,500 something mm. parishes in this country. 10,460. Now, of that, not all of them are parish chiefs. Indeed. So that meant absence yep. of parish chiefs mm. made that planning process die. Mm. Now, we are seeing uh, government coming up with a parish development model. Their main goal is like they're going to increase household income and improve the quality of lives of Ugandans, which is a good, uh, a good start. However, they came up with uh, priorities of mm. uh, <coughs> commodities that uh, we are supposed mm. to have in. There are a total of 18 mm. crops that should be, we have macadamia, we have cash nuts, mm. we have dairy, name it beans, maize, that they want now Ugandans to focus on. Mm. Because broadly there are seven pillars in that uh, model. Mm. One of them was taking 490 billion, yes, but then now, it was slashed to 200 now billion. Now that's the production part of it. Oh yeah. Now, when, when it comes to the production part of it, mm. now that's where they want farmers to focus on mm. the priorities. Now, part of that money that we are talking about was for the revolving fund. Mm. Because their proposal is, there was a proposed allocation of 38 million per parish. Mm. Now that 38 million per parish is meant to go into a revolving fund, which to us, the question is, what was the uh, criteria used? Because government is saying, for the start, we are putting a uniform amount of money mm. for each and every parish. Mm. But the reality speaks something different. S mm. We have parishes which have a total, even 100 households, mm. or village uh, households. Then there are parishes with very few households. Who shall be actually receiving the same money? And yet, for the start, we are saying 38 million. So 38 mm. million could work for, also, uh, for a parish which has a few mm. household size. Indeed. But for a parish which is really densely populated, mm -hmm. because now let us look at parishes within Buganda mm. here, they're densely populated. You can compare what that 38 million would do mm. to a parish in Karamoja, mm. which could have very few households. And the parishes with very many villages, the parishes, so that equity. You see, uh, the reason why Operation Wealth Creation did fail is because it was largely focusing on inputs and not importation of knowledge. So you have experts who are saying we need to focus more on importation of knowledge rather than the issue of inputs, meaning the uh, topic of agricultural extension and skills management is really, really important. Wouldn't you agree? Let me tell you, mm. what a, a farmer really needs in Uganda is actually not inputs. We don't need inputs per se. Because one, once there is a defined market somewhere, I know that I can grow my crops and have a defined market where to sell at a good price. Definitely, I'll work towards getting, because we have small older farmers that even have uh, gardens which are less than an acre. Mm. So imagine how much of uh, seeds do you need to plant an acre of beans? Indeed. That's something that a farmer can afford. Mm. So the focus would have been, instead of OWC, Putting so much energy mm. into inputs, yes. the best would be secure markets for these farmers. Indeed. Value addition. Yes. Patrick Lubanga Kenny, a budget specialist with, uh, with the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group. Thank you very much for having made the time to speak to us on the agricultural sector. And of course, the parish development model that is going to transform the household incomes all the way uh, by 6 to 8% alleviating poverty. That's what we, uh, we have been talking about with Patrick Lubanga Kenny. Also, there is a high level national dialogue on the economy. How best can we resuscitate this economy that has been battered by the onset of the COVID 19 pandemic? 3.3 million people actually fell into poverty as a result of the COVID 19 measures that were put in place to ward off the spread of the COVID 19 disease. 9.2 one percent of our monthly GDP was lost during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic and that is why you have specialists from the Civil Society Budget Advocacy Group being represented by Julius Mukunde. You have specialists from the Advocates Coalition on Development and Environment being represented by Arthur Bainomgishe who shall be actually at this high level a meeting. That is tomorrow, Katonga Hall, Serena Conference Center Hotel, talking about how best we can resuscitate this economy.